previous panels have addressed the future of fire service leadership and change in the fire service uh, fire department culture. How does the subject of fire service training get addressed in the context of these two subjects? Go ahead, Scott, or do me to do it for you? Go first. Okay. Um, first, I, I want to address uh, Chief Tracy's question. I, I completely agree with you. When I talk about uh, the virtual training, uh, I am speaking purely from a incident command and control standpoint. Uh, so we'll bring in our command officers to work on task location objectives, boundaries, resources, you know, use whatever acronym you want, but um, really to get our our uh, chief officers working on multitasking um, along with some critical incident things that happen at the same time, um, some mindset training. So we'll put our we'll put our command officers on a treadmill and wear them out and then we'll have them command a fire. So they're not just sitting in our fire SUVs. Um, when it comes to initial firefighters in that, uh, what I'm talking about is getting those newer firefighters who may not even understand radio communications or terminology in an environment where they're hearing things on a radio and they're having to speak on a radio. Uh, I, I agree that there is some virtual reality training that is somewhat effective for task uh, level firefighting, but I don't, I don't agree with you, Chief. I think for you to understand the dynamics of hydraulics and fire behavior, virtual reality does not do that for you. So I, as much as I love virtual reality for some things, I don't believe there's a place for it in everything. Um, so, so with that, I feel like uh, to this question, uh, the future of fire service leadership and change uh, in fire department culture, to me, they go hand in hand. They are one in the same. Um, firefighters respect those that engage at all three levels that we spoke of, whether it's task, tactical, or strategic, especially as we for progress through the ranks. And this requires, or this, uh, excuse me, um, this basically is on the fire service, uh, fire ground as well as the drill ground. Um, so, you know, if you think back to those of you that are officers, chief officers, you know, if you think back to your time of being on a fire, um, you're well respected if you actually get out and talk to the troops and you roll hose with them and you spend time with them. Um, that, you know, a lot of times they'll look at you like, what is this chief doing rolling hose? But at the same time, there's that respect. And, and that goes both ways. So we have to spend time with our people outside of the simulation room, um, outside of formal training opportunities and incidents so that we know those people. We understand uh, their their learning styles, we understand what resonates with them. Uh, more so now than say 30 years ago, uh, when I got in this business, we have to understand differing personalities, uh, different ways that people grew up and how they understand things. So it's important for us as fire service leaders to learn the technology and tools that are available to deliver this training in a way that resonates not only with the people that are in leadership positions now, but also our up and coming members. Uh, we need their buy-in and ownership so that we can help them understand these things. I'm not saying we have to completely change how we train. We just have to be a little more diverse in how we do that. Uh, and most importantly, uh, to uh, Chief Nam's point, uh, I love the, you know, just visit another city. Uh, if you're a member, uh, let's say you're an operations chief, form an operations group of chief officers in surrounding cities. Uh, that's the best way to get those other perspectives. And, and don't just limit it to large metropolitan departments like ours, but take the departments that have five or six stations and then get together once a month on a regular basis. Develop that relationship and that culture and let your people see that. Because if you model that as a leader, they will do it. So let's Let's embrace what's different, what we don't know. I loved the, the whole quote about, you know, not knowing what we don't know. And I also love to Chief Robertson's point, the tradition versus progression. So let's lean into and embrace what's different and what we don't know, whether it's cultural or otherwise, um, rather than fight the that's the way we've done it mindset, which those of us that were in the fire service in the 70s and 80s grew up with that. We stand a much better chance of gaining buy-in and collaboration and breaking down those silos uh, if we lean into what's different. 
Thank you very much, uh, Debbie and Op Central, for the opportunity to be able to uh, discuss these questions and learn from so many great people around the country and world. Yeah, um, I, I suppose just to kind of, uh, again, I'm repeating a bit of what Scott just covered, and uh, he opened up uh, quite similar to my own. Uh, I believe that leadership uh, and culture are quite heavily linked. Um, you know, the good leadership drives the culture. Uh, and um, yeah, so just like hand in hand, one of, one of the same. Uh, I, I've, I've done extensive research into the area of leadership uh, within the fire service, uh, through surveys, interviews, uh, part of a process for a thesis I was doing, uh, and I covered both junior and senior officers uh, within. And it was evident that uh, there, was, there just wasn't enough being done uh, in terms of the leadership. Uh, there wasn't enough training, uh, education, exposure, and all that. So. Uh, the general consensus was that uh, the current junior officers felt uh, they would have benefited uh, from having this, this training um, going back into the early stages of their career when they were first appointed as, as junior officers. Um, you know, their feedback was that they, they would have benefited quite a lot of having this. Um, up until recently, junior officers were always trained on the technical aspects of the job, uh, but not in the, the, the man management, the, the leadership skills, that interpersonal skills. Uh, required, as, as Scott mentioned about, you know, knowing your crews, knowing your people, knowing the personalities, um, you know, that's that's quite a different skill than, than you know, rolling out hoses and, and, and directing people at road traffic collisions and what to do. But, um, you know, there wasn't enough of this. Um, but the same, the same research from that, I just want to give you a quick kind of a few figures that came from that. Uh, 83% of uh, junior officers that I, that I surveyed um, all said that they would like to undertake leadership and management training. Uh, and a further 79% of our of firefighters that were surveyed for this, for this uh, thesis, they all themselves admitted that um, they would need it, that if they were ever promoted to this, these positions um, of junior officers and that they would need this training. Um, so, you know, even in that in itself, it's, it's, it's an identified training need. Um, now, there has been positive progress being made uh, in addressing this within our fire service. Uh, Within, within the introduction of, we, we started introducing fire service management courses, uh, effective decision making, just going back to uh, what Garrett was discussing earlier on about critical decision making. Um, we've introduced that. We're, 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 we've got a lot of stuff in the pipeline through our Hydro Command, or our Hydro Command and Development Suite. Uh, I know Paul in the UK will be familiar with the, the name Hydro, you know, some places in the States may be using it as well. You may have used it yourselves. Um, we've recently installed one here in TIP. Uh, and um, yeah, we, we've got a lot of courses coming up, um, developed and, and, and structured around that more sort of interpersonal training, um, that leadership, that management, um, the kind of the, the HR stuff, the grievances, you know, the disputes within stations um, and so forth. Um, so yeah, look, we, we've made great progress on that. Uh, it, it's starting to take off. It's, it's starting to really embrace that side of it now. Um, and the feedback that we've had from it is quite positive. Uh, a lot of the junior officers that come on these courses, and there's sometimes we've mixed with junior officers, senior officer courses that mix as well. Um, and usually as well, it's usually the first time a lot of these uh, officers sit together in the same room and get the kind of first-hand experience, you know, what's expected of their roles. They never really get exposed to each other's side of it. You know, you just have your junior officers on the ground, you've got your senior officers in management. And they never really kind of intertwine too much. Uh, this was a great, a great opportunity for them to understand uh, both perspectives and, and I suppose, again, that leadership that, you know, comes with the role and comes with the territory. Um, so, yeah, look, better leaders, better culture. Uh, it's quite simple. Um, we had a huge cultural kind of overhaul, I suppose, in the fire service here in Ireland, um, dating back to in around 2007, um, health and safety, um, the health and safety acts that came in uh, around the time massively influenced uh, how we operated, how, how training was delivered, how we, how we responded on the ground and so forth. And actually that, that led to where we are now. We're a very health and safety uh, conscious uh, culture at the moment. And, and a lot of the older, um, I suppose the more senior uh, members amongst the crew, lads that might be there 30 years or whatever, you know, uh, I've, heard, I've heard, heard them say, you know, common sense is now being replaced by procedures and guidelines. Um, you know, the introduction of these procedures and guidelines, they've led to an increase in training, uh, you know, and a national standardization of them. So um, while culture, you know, it's, it, it, 
all of it's heavily linked. We could go right back to the first question asked tonight. You know, again, is it too much training? You know, uh, health and safety has led to a lot more training for us. It becomes it's now a culture that we are health and safety conscious. Um, but look, don't get me wrong. I'm all for ensuring the safety uh, of, of crews, self included. You know, once we finish tonight, I could be called out and, and responded to something. So I'm all for you know everybody comes home uh, at the end of the, at the end of the show. Um, and that's done through more thorough and recognised training. Uh, certainly has influenced, um, you know, again, like I said, uh, that more health and safety conscious culture for us. Um, but to summarise, I suppose, on this question as a whole, I, I believe you need to have the right people, uh, the right leaders uh, in positions throughout the entire rank structure uh, of the fire service, from, from the first level of junior officers right up to the, uh, and including the chief uh, fire officer themselves, uh, in order to affect positive culture change uh, and these people, in order to do that, for the benefit of the fire service, they need to be trained and educated uh, in the area of leadership and management. Uh, I, I'd like to kind of, uh, just coming to the end, I'd, I'd like to kind of quote a senior officer I interviewed as part of my research when I asked a question surrounding one's ability uh, to, to lead or the lack of ability to lead and manage, uh, having maybe a direct influence on station and staff morale uh, and uh, uh, efficiency. Uh, either positively or neg negatively. And the response was, uh, it's a great quote, uh, and it's stuck with me since, uh, if a brigade is dysfunctional, the management in that brigade is dysfunctional. The brigade is a mirror image of the management. Um, and you could drop, uh, I, I believe you could drop culture in there, uh, and, and it would still read the same. You know, if, if the culture is dysfunctional, um, you know, there's something wrong within, within the ranks of the people that influence that culture. Um, so, yeah, you know, uh, in order to influence the culture for the better, you need to better equip those in a position to influence it. Uh, training, education, personal development are key. Uh, I, I do believe, for, from what I know is coming through our Hydra Command and, and Development Suite, uh, what's planned in, in training-wise in, in the near future, um, I, I certainly do believe that the Irish Fire Service are heading in the right direction um, with that training, and we're kind of moving away from the old... Uh, so that's just how we do things. Um, there was a Defence Forces here in Ireland quote that was, uh, I, I read, again, part of my research, um, and it was on leadership and culture, and uh, the Defence Forces um, had a piece out on it. And, and what they said was that if the question was ever asked, uh, why do we do that? And the answer is, that's just how we've always done it. Then something is wrong and something needs to change. Um, so... Yeah, I think we're heading in the right direction, speaking primarily for ourselves here in Ireland anyway, but um, it's just the tip of the iceberg, but, you know, hugely interlinked. And, and I believe, like I said, the right people in the right positions um, massively affect the culture and, and we, need, we, need, we need to offer them the training and education on that.